It's a pleasure to, to be here today. So on behalf of uh, Lilian Plumer, the Minister for Aid and Trade, who unfortunately couldn't be here. But it's, it's good to be here with a group of people who are all committed to, to the subject, to, to, to promote entrepreneurship in fragile states. And I would like to thank uh, Yannick uh, and his team, Spark, for, for organizing again and again this, this conference. And, and for us in the ministry, this has always been a very inspiring place to where we share our experiences and what works and what doesn't work. Because this is really difficult area to, to work in, where as a government you have to, to very uh, look carefully what, what you can do and where you probably should uh, refrain uh, in, in acting uh, very actively. For most of us here, I think working in fragile states is something we do by choice, but uh, I mean, many entrepreneurs ha have no choice. They have to cope with the situation if they want to make a living. And I'm pleased that this conference puts business people in spotlights. We heard this, uh, I mean, a colleague from Ivory Coast this morning who spoke earlier. And uh, I think it's really for, for us lessons learned. What, what can we do as governments? What can others do like the IFC who is here? What can others do like NGOs? What works well? Um, probably because I, was, I joined one of the, the conferences and there's some of the entrepreneurs that, well, governments, please, Watch out, because sometimes you're distorting just the market with your money. And so it's also it's a delicate uh, uh, place how, where you should act and where you shouldn't. Um, it's good because we, I think we as governments, we have to learn from, from, from entrepreneurs what works and what doesn't work. And I'm, I'm happy, uh, I also heard some suggestions how, for instance, our Dutch good growth and could work better. And I promise you to, to, fo to follow up on, uh, on this. Today is 11 November. And 11th of November, in some parts of the Netherlands, will celebrate St. Martin's Day. And the story goes that a nobleman in the Middle Ages was appalled by the poverty of a beggar he met while riding out his horse. He took his sword, cut his coat in two, and gave the beggar half to keep him warm. And now, every year on 11 November, Dutch children carrying lanterns go from door to door singing in exchange for sweets. And this is meant to encourage the people to give and share with people less fortunate than themselves. There's this, unfortunately, some similarity that today many young women less fortunate than ourselves are coming here as a regular migrant to Europe, fleeing conflicts, other problems in their homelands, and knocking at our door. And we know that many of these fragile states have a very young population. Take the Sahel region, 60% of the population is below 20. And it's a tremendous challenge to help these young people escape poverty by earning a living in their own country so they can send their children to school. As I already said, we, we, the Dutch government now is a minister who deals both with aid and trade. And we think it's a very useful combination. It's a useful combination because it unites uh, the, 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 the both parts that we have to work with the private sector. And I think uh, I was glad to hear that uh, out of the debate between our uh, two coalition partners, working with the private sector is something where we really uh, found each other. I think one of the lessons we learned in development cooperation as, as a, let's say, as a bureaucratic professional is that if there's no growth, if there's no focus on the private sector as an engine for growth, um, I mean, you'll never, we'll never be able to, to support countries, to support people to become self-reliant. And in that sense, I very much share what was said by Mr. Taverne on, uh, on this, that, that we have to focus on how can we get people and countries more independent, to maybe less depending on aid. And I think, for instance, countries like Rwanda give a sheer example by stating openly that they want to uh, do without aid in a certain number of years. So the private sector is key in that sense. Joining forces with the private sector, investors, financial institutions will help small and medium-sized enterprises to start or grow their business. This does not mean that we do not have to work with governments, with NGOs, with multilaterals, because as, oh well, we hear by this conference organized by an NGO, by Spark, they're able to, to reach some Organize, some businesses who were never able to reach by the formal official uh, government organizations. We have to work with the government if we want to 
let's say, increase the business climate, if we, if we want to improve regulations to, to enhance a favorable business climate. We have to work with multilaterals. We work actively with IFC, and they, they were here this morning, to, to promote um, a good business climate in these fragile countries. Let me give you two examples, a few examples of how we work in, in, in partnership in these fragile countries. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, we teamed up with investors and the Dutch company Enclude to help, up, to help set up iFinance solutions that provide loans and savings projects for local businesses. And it proved an instant hit, attracting 2,000 customers in the first two months alone. And we started, second example, the Dutch Good Growth Fund. Two goals, increase access to finance for Dutch entrepreneurs who want to export or invest in developing countries, and also increase access to entrepreneurs in developing countries, access to finance in developing countries. We've made now already, we only started a year ago, some very good investments in, for instance, South Sudan, in Mali, we're busy with Burundi. So we know, we've seen that it's, it's a, we are able to, to organize and to support with government money, not just with subsidies, but with, let's say, uh, revolving funds to promote, to actively support entrepreneurs who need access to finance. And we are, um, one of the goals we set with this Dutch Good Growth is that people often, and investors also, especially also in, in, in European and Western countries, they think it's a very risky environment. And of course, it is a risky environment, but it often is, uh, has to deal also with risk, risk perception. Because once you're there, and once you know your people, and once you know the network, uh, investments uh, can be actually uh, more profitable than they would be in other, other uh, areas of the world. So, um, back to, 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 to growth and, and, and the way we work with it. Growth is crucial. But, uh, as we always say, growth has to be inclusive. And it's, that sounds nice, but what does it mean? It means for us in our work that you want to reach smaller farmers as well with your smaller farmers, smaller businesses with your instrument. You want to promote having smaller businesses, having them access to finance, access to land, access to education, access to, 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 to markets. Um, and we, 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 we know, and, and it's, it's still ground which is still we have to, to work because, because it's, it's, it's often easier said than done. And I'll come back to that a bit later. And I also want to, to echo a bit what Mr. Van Laar said, that, well, it's of course a bit of a dilemma. You invest heavily in a country like South Sudan in, in promoting businesses, and, and um, you invest heavily in countries like, like Burundi in, in security sector reform. But then, well, all of a sudden the countries fall back, and then, well, was it worthy investment? And, it's good to really do your research in this, whether, whether uh, how, how, how much risk you can take. And, um, but on the other hand, we've seen examples, and I think the, the, the South Sudan example is a good example. In those countries, in those parts of the country where we've been heavily investing, we've seen there's less base of a conflict. Today, ladies and gentlemen, is the Valletta Summit. It's a summit where European and African Union heads of uh, state meet to discuss migration. And um, there's a few issues to, uh, they, they talk about organizing, how can we control these, these migration flows, how can we, we stop the, 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 the terrible journeys to seek a future for ourselves overseas uh, uh, through Europe, uh, traveling to, to, the, to the, the richer parts of, uh, of uh, Europe. Uh, how can we stop the smuggling model? But at the, the other hand, how can we work on return for those who did not access, we did not get a, a, an official asylum in, in, in our countries. And how can we work together with, with, with for instance, with the diaspora, as, as we've heard also today in, in some of the workshops. Um, and of course, we talk about uh, this, the, the, the debate in Valletta will be very much about what we call the root causes of migration, which was already mentioned. Um, for, of course, facing insecurity and, and conflict in home countries is one of the reasons for these root of for migration. But also, lack of economic prospects plays a big role. And we've learned that, that focusing on jobs and economic de development can uh, probably in the beginning lead to more migration in the short term. Because, for instance, it provides the money needed to travel. But root causes of migration are what we call multifaceted. And I believe that if you feel safe, if your voice is heard, if your children can go to school, and you can earn a decent living, 
you can have and would probably prefer a future in your own country, among your family, your friends. But I would also be open and use the opportunity today to listen to entrepreneurs, for people who really fled their, 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 their country to, to listen what, what, what they think of, of this. What the Netherlands government did, we launched what we call a local employment in Africa for development program, the LEAD, making 25 million euros available to the eight African countries where people, where the most migrants are, are, are coming from, from 2016 to 2018. Another 25 million euros will be used for local business development through the Dutch Good Growth Fund. Together with France and Germany, the, the Netherlands has really advocated within the EU that this should be much more in the core of the, of the response from Europe to, to uh, these migration flows and should be at the core of, of the, the offer of the EU, uh, which is on the table now in the Valletta summit. And I think we, 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 we agreed and we, 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 we achieved this. Um, so the offer, which is, will be on the table, and if we come to an agreement, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very hope positive that we will, uh, will consist of a big contribution of the EU, especially focusing on, on jobs and on, uh, employment. So this all sounds nice, but what, what actually do we know from, from empirical research what works and what doesn't work? I mean, we have did some experiences. Many of you here have your experiences. And I would like to, to, um, to cite uh, one of the works of Mr. Christopher Bledman and Laura Ralston. They, they, did some, they presented some uh, research last June called Generating Employment in Poor and Fragile State. And they we're looking at the evidence, and they, what they found is that uh, smart injections of capital, be it cash, be it capital goods, be it livestock, seem to be the most effective tools for putting people to work and boosting income, probably more than, than skilled training and microfinance. And if such injections are targeted to the highest risk, man, they will only modestly help reduce some form of finance. I think this is really triggering uh, research. And what can we learn from this? Um, and there's no easy answers. And at least what we learned is that once you do intervene as a government with, with your programs and with your, your diplomatic efforts, let's, let's have a good look at, at how really the informal and the formal power relations actually are. And are we actually, secondly, designing the programs that people want? Now, we're not, we're not very keen to share our setbacks, but, but we had one also as the Dutch government. Uh, designing agricultural programs for ex-combatants uh, did not work because the people didn't want to work in the agriculture in the first place. We had skill programs for, for women uh, um, to, 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 to uh, increase the skills for, to get a, get a job. But if they're too much busy by, by let's say, day-to-day -day household work, uh, it failed as well. So we learned a bit to how can we look with what we call a conflict lens to all these programs and all our, our, our interventions. And I have to say, we, we, we learned also a lot from my colleagues from the IFC. Uh, we work together in, in the, what we call the CASA program. It's, 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 uh, it's just conflict affected states in Africa where we really join our teams in, in, um, in looking, making this analysis actually better before we start uh, uh, investing, before we start with our technical assistance uh, shaping uh, the programs. As Mr. Bledman and uh, Ms. Ralston noted in their report, not all forms of violence can be addressed through what we call private sector development, economic growth, and employment. Nor can, uh, um, let's say, our, our program solve all root causes of irregular migration. So we need to focus on, on a broader efforts efforts who build trust between governments and the public, between individuals. And what's what we call in the Netherlands the comprehensive approach. It's, it's focusing on enhancing human security, it's also supporting rule of law, access to justice, and also advocating for inclusive and better governance. Because after all, unless security is, uh, is enhanced uh, and government powers are restricted by law, entrepreneurs like those here today, will continue to encounter abuse and an unfavorable business climate. So it's important to involve all these players, governments in our program, NGOs who can do advocating work, uh, advocate for accountable institutions, if we want to succeed. Finally, in September last year, the, the international community agreed on uh, 17 new what we call global goals. They are the successor of uh, what we call the Millennium Development Goals. 
And there are quite some remarkable differences I would like to share with you, which are also relevant for the work we do. First is, if you look to, the, to these former goals, the MDGs, you could see that where are we lagging behind? We are lagging behind in countries we are in conflict or just came out of a conflict. Secondly, um, it's not just about health and education. It's good. I mean, we have to invest in health and education as well. But if, as long as we do not invest in growth, as long as we do not invest in, in jobs, in inequality, we will not, uh, uh, let's say, be able to really make uh, pr uh, progress uh, on the whole uh, scheme. Thirdly, it's not just governments, it's internationally agreed. We have to work with the private sector as well. So I think these international acknowledgement of, of that it is necessary to, with all these partners, focusing on growth and especially in fragile uh, countries is also a big boost for our work and our support. We uh, give us as bilateral donors. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I hope that two of my main messages today will, st will stay with you. And the first one is we really need to listen to the entrepreneurs, to the needs they expressed if, if we want to be successful. And second, we have to join forces, governments in, in, the, in donor countries, in the countries themselves, businesses, NGOs, knowledge institutes, multilaterals, if we want to succeed. And the Dutch government, I can assure you, will be your partner in this. Thank you.